I'll put this link back in the chat, and then I'll also put a link to um, the folder that I have this stuff implemented in when we look at code, so you can follow along. It's going to be a little bit tough to follow along because these files are a mess. Um, uh, they're not they're not that much of a mess. They're just enormous. Um, so we have a functional component called CSS transition. It's supposed to go inside a transition group, potentially, if you're using it in a list, potentially. I haven't done that, and it seems to be working fine. So that's one thing. Um, how this works is you wrap whatever you want animated. Um, and it has to be a real div. It can't be a fragment um, because ultimately it changes the the classes. It changes the CSS classes of its child, of its single child component. So it won't take multiple. It has to take one child component, and that child component has to be something that has classes, so CSS can like actually like read it, uh, if that makes sense. And then the the trick is, it's a state machine. And so a state machine can have, hmm, we haven't really looked at state machines, um, but a state machine has basically predefined states it can be in. And those states, you know, certain states progress to certain other states. And that's how a state machine works, basically. Like a light switch is a state machine. It can go from off to on and on to off, and those are its two states. And it can only go between those two states. So that's that's kind of how it works. Um, so we can jump into the code. I don't normally use VS Code, but I figure people are probably more familiar with VS Code. Um, this is kind of a big file, so I'll just uh, give a quick tour of the file. We have lots of props. You don't have to worry about those. These two booleans are what we're going to take a big look at. So we're just going to look at buttons. Uh, and the buttons, in this case, these buttons. So these buttons animate. Um, when you select a card and they unanimate when you deselect a card, right? And then they don't show up for this card because this is the creative form and it doesn't need buttons. Uh, and these also disappear if you're editing your project title. So th those are the states that, that we have for these buttons. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so that's what this Boolean is doing. So we're not the create card. Uh, we are the selected project. Edit is not active, and project executed means we've entered the project. And so as you can see, it disappears as everything else disappears at that time too. So these are our, this is our state, or yeah, these are sort of the states of our state machine. Uh, and then so if we come down to the CSS transition component, and this is the one that we're looking at, there's another one we can look at also um, at the end here, but this is the one that we're looking at. So we have the, the functional component CSS transition. It has a few props timeout, class names, and in. I think this is basically the minimum things that are required. Uh, and then it has one child. And that child in this case is project card buttons container. Project card buttons container. So if we take a look at project card buttons container, which is here, just watch this because this will change. Oops, let's let's do a different uh, set of animations here. So we turn this on, and I don't know if you can see that, but it changes twice, right? So right now it's holding exit done, and this is holding enter done. And what the CSS transition functional component does is it adds CSS classes in a progression over time. Uh, so when in, changes from false to true uh it adds the class name that you give it this is class names by the way class names plural um because this is like the prefix of the automatic classes that it adds so project card buttons container is this div's original class name that one doesn't go anywhere that one stays what gets added are these specific CSS classes with the class names prefix. So this in goes from false to true because we select it. And so that Boolean goes from false to true and this re-renders. Uh, when this goes from false to true, it first adds enter. And enter is kind of like the beginning state. We have to give it something, otherwise it doesn't know what it's transitioning from. 
uh, and this is in the docs, the very next tick, it adds enter active, which is why we only see like two different states. It's because enter just like only for one moment is there, like for one tick, um, you know, one sixtieth of a second. This is on the, the transition applies. And then when this transition is done, we get enter done. So it goes enter, enter active, enter done. And then this is just what stays, right? We've gone from false to true. The animation is done. We put enter done on. This gets put on at, after a timeout of 500 milliseconds. Um, you you can set the time for your transitions, but I mean, if you make this long, it doesn't care. It's going to go to done at 500, whatever you set the timeout to be. So like these these are just for the animations. It doesn't like pay attention to your how long your animation is taking. Uh, and then you know. Once, once we have in is true, enter done is on. Same thing with exit. We have three exit states, exit, exit active, and exit done. Um, and so exit done, opacity zero, we've exited, it stays at. If you don't put this in, like if you don't put exit done in, it'll go through exit and then it'll do exit active. So it'll transition out and then it'll be done, but we don't have an exit done class and we'll just pop back in. Like if we, you know, if we, if we leave this out, that's is that valid CSS? That's not valid CSS, is it? So just to just to show you what this looks like, you know. Let me refresh. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, that shouldn't work, but I don't normally use VS Code, so we'll just chalk it up to that. In any case, um, now that's for like regular buttons, but if you try to do this by itself, um, and in other cases you'll run into trouble. So for one thing, this library will not do the entrance animation on initial mount. Um, so if, if your card, if your, if your component renders with n equals true from the very beginning, like if it mounts with n equals true from the beginning, no animation will play unless you pass appear equals true. Uh, and then you get another set of um, prefixed classes, which is appear. So we were looking at the buttons. Now we're gonna look at the cards. Um, when I refresh the page, you can see they have an entrance animation and that that may be what you're interested in. You want your stuff to, to enter or to animate on mount. Um, so to do that, appear has to be true. And then you just give, you know, dot project appear dot project appear active in the same way you do enter and enter active. Um, I think there's probably also an appear done. And what this lets you do is, you know, just lets you do different states on initial mount than on like that, you know, the, like the buttons, but, um, the cards are, have opacity by default. So I don't need to, to add that. I could, but I don't need to, um, yeah, that's, um, that's one thing now. That's that's pretty straightforward. Like that's not too bad. Uh, the the docs are not super clear on like how this appear class works, but it's the same. Like you just use the same prefix, which in this name, animation class name, animation class name. It's project card. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. One thing to note is um, this comes with some pretty neat callback functions. So one thing um would be like. If the thing that you're animating the unmount of is getting cut off because you need to like redirect um, when you click on something. So for instance, when I click on this, it doesn't redirect until the animation is over, right? Because if it, if it redirected when I clicked on it, it, we wouldn't see the animation because React is going to unmount pretty much everything here and mount whatever the page is asking for, right? According to your routes file, right? Um, so in order to get around that, uh, you give this on exited and on exited gets called when the timeout runs out on the exit. So basically when I click on something, I set a state, you know, I set one of my state booleans project executed to true, and that will turn, you know, all my project cards to off, but we won't redirect until the animation is done using on exited. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like, okay. If you want to animate the exit of something, you have to wait till the exit is over. And so you just use the on exit callback. There's actually callbacks um, for the end of a lot of the different um, 
states. So you can do it like right when it starts or these are both pretty much right when it starts, when it's done coming out. So you, you have callback, you can kind of hook into all these events, which is pretty neat, I think. Um, I think that's that's everything that comes to mind. Uh, what questions do you have? Just curious, when you were saying that, like on line seventy-eight, where you have um, five hundred milliseconds set to your transition, yeah, I'm in a CSA. Okay, right. And you said that doesn't necessarily matter because you have a timeout set to you know it could be one thousand milliseconds, it could be two thousand. Um, so is that really necessary then to throw that into the CSS property or is that more just be explicit on um I think it needs this like for the animation like to transition correctly. So like you, you could make this two hundred milliseconds and then the animation would be two hundred milliseconds, but the on exited thing is still gonna fire at five hundred milliseconds. So gotcha. in the CSS, these timers only apply to the animations. Like in, in one place I'm using like 700 just because I wanted it to be slower and it just felt better when it was going a little bit slower. And then some I have like a little bit faster because it just feels better when it's a little bit faster. But 500 milliseconds is still the. Like I'm what I imagine happens is, you know, like this just calls a set timeout and then, you know, at when the set timeout fires, it just hands it these, you know, functions. So. Yes. Any other questions? It's a bit of a pain. I'm not sure I would like blanket recommend it because like managing, like all of a sudden I have like way more state booleans, right? Cause like, ah, if the form has been submitted, we don't want to redirect right when the form submits, we want to let the animation do the redirect. Um, right. So it, it gets a little bit complicated, right? Like it doesn't redirect until that animation is done. Um, but it's not bad, all things considered. That's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Uh, that's the way you, you explain each of those those different things. Thanks. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, if there's no other questions, I guess we can all get back to work. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing. Sorry. Go ahead. You first. I was gonna say, would you mind like sending the video out here? Yeah, yeah. So I, Nate and Damien, I did record this. Um, if you guys are okay with me like distributing that, let me know. And if not, I won't do it. But okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, cool. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll. Uh... Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. See you later.